ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance that we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you be invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything when you be invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguidance and it leads us astray wa kullu dalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd an abi darda radiyallahu anhu qala awsani rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi tis'in la tushrik billahi shay'a wa in qutta'ta aw hurrita wa la tatrik wa la tatrukunna as-salata al-maktubata muta'ammidan ومن تركها متعمدا برئت منه الذمه ولا تشربن الخمر فانها مفتاح كل شر واطع والديك وان امراك ان تخرج من من دنياك فاخرج لهما ولا تنازعن ولا ولا الامر وان رايت انك انت ولا تف ولا تفرر من من الزحف وان هلكت وفر اصحابك وانفق من طولك على اهلك ولا ترفع اصاك عن اهلك واخفهم في الله عز وجل this hadith which we find in al bukhari al adab al mufrad sheikh al albani he graded it as hasan abu darda he says that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised me and recommended nine things to me he said do not commit shirk us do not associate anything with Allah even if you're cut to pieces or burned he said number 2 do not abandon a prescribed prayer deliberately anyone who does so will forfeit Allah's protection number 3 do not drink wine or as we're going to see do not do any intoxicant any drug or alcohol it is the key to every evil number 4 obey your parents if they are commanded if they command you to abandon seeking worldly possessions then abandon them for them then leave them for them number 5 do not contend with those in power even when you think you are right and that your position is right do not run out number 6 do not run away from the army when it advances even if you're killed and your companions are running away number 7 spend on your wife or your family out of your means number 8 do not raise a stick against your wife <clears throat> and number 9 cause your family to fear Allah the almighty the exalted in this very important narration of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's advising and recommending nine things and when he did these things they were complete in something that would give you a path that would put you on the path towards jannah so it is upon us inshallah to break down this hadith into this week's khutbah and next week's to understand why these things were recommended the first thing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he recommended la tushrik billahi shay'a wa in qutta'ta aw hurrita he said 
وسلم, do not associate anything with Allah, even if you're cut to pieces or burned. This mentioning of shirk was always done by the Prophet وسلم, Why? Because it is the thing that if you do it, it will take you out of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَأَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Allah says what means, indeed Allah does not forgive this sin of shirk, but He forgives what is less than that to whom He wills and for whom He wills. And He who associates others with Allah has fabricated a tremendous sin, the largest of sins, the worst of sins. So even if your life was to be at stake, do not commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We saw the companions struggling, being sacred, being killed because of this same thing. Bilal radiallahu anhu had big heavy stones put on his body that could crush any one of us. And they were heated hot with the desert heat. Just because he was saying, Ahad, Ahad, Allah is one, Allah is one. But he refused to give that up to commit shirk even to save himself. So do not associate anything with Allah even if you're cut to pieces or burned. I remind you again of the story of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. And I will mention, may Allah have mercy on him, his name because of all of the scholars of the four time, he began with this kitab of tawheed, this book of tawheed. And it is not upon anyone to dislike him because of stories about politics or this or that. Because if you read his books without knowing his name, you would love the book. Because it calls to the Qur'an and it calls to the Sunnah. And that's what we need to return to. That's what we need to return to. He used to teach his students Kitab al-Tawheed over and over again till they said, Shaykh, can we learn something else? Can we go on to a, a book of fiqh or something else? So the Shaykh, he mentioned to them, he said, let me give this some thought. A few days later, he came to his students and he told them that because he had a face which was troubled and they asked him what was wrong. And he told them there was a man that he heard that was in a house a distance away that had sacrificed some, uh, a rooster or a small animal, animal to a jinn, yani to something other than Allah. So I sent someone to confirm that affair. The students listened to this and went about their business. A few days later, he came to his students and said, they did not sacrifice anything to other than Allah. Rather, it was a man who committed zina with his mother. So at this, when the students heard, they said, A'udhu Billah, zina with his mother. They were startled, they were shocked. They could not handle this concept of this sin. And although it is filthy, although it is wrong, although it would be a major, major sin, even that sin does not expel you out of Islam like shirk does. So they were astonished at this. He said, see, you told me you understood this affair of Tawheed. But in actuality, you did not understand the affair of Tawheed. You were not shocked when I told you someone sacrificed other than Allah. But you were shocked when I told you about this sin, although being major, does not excommunicate you out of Islam. So he taught the book of Tawheed again. Do not belittle this issue. Unfortunately, we have deviants who are on the social media spread, very famous, belittling Tawheed and belittling Aqeedah. It is what will serve you on the Day of Judgment. It was what will save you on the Day of Judgment. It will be what earns you Allah's Rahmah on the Day of Judgment. If only your Tawheed and your Aqeedah are correct. Do never belittle this. Read the book of Tawheed. Read it over and over again. Teach it to your children. Because unfortunately, many abandon this call and they fall into shirk without even knowing it. <clears throat> The second point that he had mentioned, that the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned as an advice and a recommendation, He said, and do not abandon a prescribed prayer, the five daily prayers. Just begin with that. Do not abandon one of these deliberately. Anyone who does so will forfeit Allah's protection. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he mentioned in the authentic hadith, in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, بَيْنَ الْكُفْرُ وَالْإِيمَانِ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ That the Prophet sallallahu he said, between being a disbeliever, and being, uh, having iman, having faith, is the abandonment of this prayer. In another narration, بَيْنَ الرَّجُلُ وَبَيْنَ الْكُفْرِ وَالشِرْكُ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ Between a man, and between kufr and shirk, 
between disbelief and polytheism is somebody abandoning the prayer. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this advice came strongly recommended from the Prophet ﷺ because we know Salah Amud Islam. We know that the Salah, the prayer, is the pillar of Islam. Abdullah bin Buraida, he narrated from his father that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-ahd al-ladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salah, faman tarakaha faqad kafar. This hadith which is also in the Sunnah of Al-Tirmidhi and Sahih, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the covenant between us and them is the salah. What makes us different from others is the prayer. Whoever leaves it has committed kufr. Whoever leaves the prayer, abandons the prayer, neglects the prayer, does not pray then this person has committed kufr, has committed disbelief. وَعَنْ شَقِيْكِ مِنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ قَالَ كَانَ أَصْحَابُ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرون شيئاً من الأعمال ترقه كفر غير الصلاة. شقيق بن عبد الله he narrated or he reported that the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم did not consider the abandonment or the leaving of any action to be disbelief, except for those who abandon the salah. This, the companions, radiallahu anhum, aradahum, they had a consensus. The one who does not pray has entered disbelief, has entered kufr. So the advice from the Prophet ﷺ, do not abandon any prayer muta'amidan, on purpose. Because the one who does so, he does not have Allah's protection. Another proof that this person enters into disbelief. The third point that the Prophet ﷺ he mentioned that was recommended. And do not consume any intoxicant. As we will see, khamra is not just alcohol. Every drug falls under the, into this category of khamr. He said, do not take any intoxicant. It is the key to every evil. And even if you have an ounce of a brain, you will see the effect from alcohol and drugs being nothing but the destruction of one's health and one's body, one's family and one's community. You will see it destroying a whole person's life. And then it becomes what they're addicted to, it becomes their being, it becomes their God. That's what they end up worshipping. Allah, He says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They ask you regarding intoxicants and gambling. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ they ask you regarding intoxicants and gambling, say in them is great sin, major sin, and little benefit, but clearly the sin it outweighs the benefit. So it was forbidden for anyone upon this deen to consume any intoxicant. To stay away from it completely. Not just to do it, but to buy it, to sell it, to produce it, to help carry it, to help transport it, so something that aids in its production, everything is forbidden in those situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمِلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What means, O you who have believed? Again, when you hear these ayat, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu, if you want to be a believer on the day of resurrection, you should be all ears. Everything should be toned out. So that you hear and you obey, so you're with the believers on the day of resurrection. Oh, you who believe, and eat intoxicants, and gambling, sacrificing on stone altars to other than Allah, and divining arrows, they are but the defilement, the filth of the work of shaitan, of Satan. So avoid it that you may be successful. These things should be avoided completely. They have no khair in them. Look at how many of them say that there is some benefit in, in this intoxicant or whatever it may be, that it's good for your heart. Let alone you find out that it may be good for your heart, but it causes how many other kinds of cancer. Allah's statement is sufficient. It is great sin. And although there may be some small benefit in it, the sin outweighs the goodness in it by far. So stay away from it and avoid it completely. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kullu muskarin khamru kullu khamrin haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in this hadith which is Hassan in the sunnah of Ibn Majah 
He said, everything which intoxicates, anything which affects the brain, in a large quantity, then even the small quantity of it is haram. Anything which intoxicates. So we have alcohol, we have marijuana, we have uh, cocaine, heroin, you have shrooms, you have everything, ecstasy, whatever may be out there, meth, all of those things. Whether it's liquid, whether you drink it or snort it, inhale it, shoot it in, whatever it may be. It's all hum. It's all hum. Everything which intoxicates is hum, and every hum is forbidden and haram. And Abu Bakr ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Harith, he narrated that his father said, سَمِعْتُ عُثْمَانَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَقُولُ أَجْتَنَبُ الْخَمْرُ فَإِنَّهَا أُمُّ الْخَبَائِثِ Uthman رضي الله عنه, he was heard to have said, may Allah be pleased with him, stay away from khamr, all intoxicants. Avoid is not even get close. Avoid means stay the furthest away you can from it. Uh, stay away from every intoxicant because it is the mother of all evils. Why? Because when you're under its possession, then you can do every other sin without any regard. You can kill, you can harm, you can do anything of the wrong, commit zina. When you're under those uh, spells from those intoxicants, he said, avoid khamr, for it is the mother of all evils. And it was also mentioned something, and he mentioned something similar, qala, fajtanibu al-khamr, فَإِنَّهُ وَاللَّهِ لَا يَجْتَمْعُ وَالْإِيمَانَ أَبَدًا إِلَّا يُوشِكُ أَحَدَهُمَا أَنْ يُخْرِجْ صَاحِبُهُ صَاحِبَهُ رَوْهُ النِّسَائِ This hadith which is sahih, it was continued and it was mentioned something similar. He said, avoid khamr, for by Allah, avoid, again, khamr is not just alcohol, any drug, avoid it all, for by Allah, it can never coexist with faith, with iman, but soon one of them will expel the other. If you're doing both, one's going to kick out the other. Either your iman will cause you to quit that hum, drugs and alcohol and intoxicants, or it will overtake you and you'll give up your faith and your deen. Ummi Salima, radiallahu anha, she narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَجْعَلْ شِفَاءُكُمْ فِي مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ This hadith which is sahih, in the collection of a hadith from Ibn Habban, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah did not place a cure or a healing in anything which He made unlawful or haram to you. So do not get caught up in what society is caught up in. That this will help me, this will cure me, this will heal me, this will make me feel better. Because we're in a society now where they want to legalize everything, even if it's haram. Trying to make excuse after excuse, do not fall into those traps. Do not blind yourself. What Allah made haram and forbidden was for a reason. And there's cures and other things. He did not place a cure or a healing in anything which he made haram. Brothers, if you can move forward, fill in all the gaps, please. There's uh, a lot of brothers coming in and they need some space in the back, inshallah. Barakallah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that we find in the Adab al-Mufrad, the book of manners of Imam al-Bukhari رحمه الله. In this hadith is حسن. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he recommended nine things. One Never associate partners with Allah, even if you're cut into pieces and burned. Never commit shirk. It should show you the vileness and evilness of it. It will expel you. That is the sin that will take you out of Islam. Number two, do not abandon any prayer muta'amidan on purpose. Do not let a prayer pass that you do not pray. For the one who does so is not protected, that has no guarantee of protection from Allah. Number three, the one we just mentioned, avoid all khamr, drugs, alcohol, any intoxicant, because it is the mother of all evils. We get to the fourth point today, and we will conclude with this one, where the Prophet ﷺ, he recommended, he said, وَأَتِعْ وَأَلْدَيْكَ وَإِنْ أَمَرَاكَ أَنْ تَخْرُجْ مِنْ دُنْيَاكَ أَنْ تَخْرُجْ مِنْ دُنْيَاكَ فَاخْرُجْ لَهُمَا 
that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, obey your parents even if they command you to abandon your worldly possessions, then abandon them for them. This was the fourth advice given in this hadith. We know the importance of the parents, but it's something that we constantly need to be reminded from. Why? Because again, our desires, our feelings, our emotions, many of the times they take over, and although that's your parents, and you should be loving them and serving them and patient with them, many of the times you lose it. You lose your temper. You get frustrated with them. Maybe you start to hate them or wish bad things for them. And this is the deterioration of the family unit that we're seeing. Even amongst the Muslims, it's entering into our homes. May Allah protect us from it. Allah, He says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبْرَ أَحَدَهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Allah, He says what means, and your Lord has decreed that none should be worshipped except Him. Again, affirming Tawheed and ridding anybody from committing any drop of shit. And then Allah, He mentions what's next in importance in this ayah. He said, and to your parents, give them good treatment. Whether one or both of them achieve old age while they are with you, in your presence, alive and you're alive. Say not to them any word of disrespect, not even the sound of uff. God, ah, uh, what? Those sounds of disrespect when you explain something, even if you're responding to them, it's done in a way as if they are annoying you. Do not say unto them any such words or sounds, and do not repel them, but speak to them a noble word. word. Kindness, gentleness, compassionate, being patient with them, especially in their older years, because this is what is required. Like they were patient with us when we were babies and crying and complaining and wanting to eat, wanting to drink every other second. Abu Bakr, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, He said, Shall I not inform you to what is most, the most majorest of the sins? Tell us, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, They were keen. We want to know them so we can stay away from them. He said it is to commit shirk with Allah, to associate partners with Allah. Included in this, we've said, sacrificing to other than Allah, making dua to other than Allah, even if it's making dua to the Prophet wasallam. This is shirk, kufr, you're disbelieving, because this is not what you should be doing. Do not associate anyone with Allah, and ishraqu billah wa al walidayn. And to be disobedient to the parents, to not serve them. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Many hadith we mention. But the time is short with it, so we will end on, one, on this statement. Taysala ibn Mayyas, he said, I was with the Najadites, the Kharajites, when I committed wrong actions that I thought were major actions. So I went to Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and I told him about them. He said, what are they? So I told him what these wrong actions I did were. And he said, these are not, these are not the major actions, wrong actions. He said, there are nine major wrong actions. He said they are associating partners with Allah. Shirk, again. Killing someone. <coughs> deserting an army when it's advancing. Slandering a chaste woman. Meaning, accusing a chaste woman. A woman who has not done any wrong intimacy-wise. Accusing her of being unchaste. This is from the major sins. Usury, riba. Engaging in any riba for your profit or for not for your profit. Even if it's harming you. That you engage in that riba. It's from the major wrong actions. Consuming an orphan's property, committing heresy in the masajid, scoffing, ridiculing, or mocking someone. And then this last point that he mentioned, Ibn Umar mentioned, he said, قال فوالله لو ألنت لها الكلام وأطعمتها الطعام لتدخلن الجنة ما مجتنبت الكبائر. This hadith which is also in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad from Imam Al-Bukhari and it is Sahih. The end of Ibn Umar when he was saying to the nine major wrong actions, the last one he mentioned 
was causing one's parents to weep because of your disobedience. Causing one's parents to weep, to cry because of your disobedience. For all of us here, think of any time, your action or your reaction, your negligence caused your mother or your father to shed a tear. Any time your voice raised upon them, where you drove them crazy, where you didn't want to listen to them, where you favored your spouse or even your children over your parents, think of any time you did that. Causing the parents to weep one tear out of disobedience is from the major sins. Think of those times. Think about them deep and hard. Every time. Don't try and ignore it and not think of your past. And this is a reminder to all of us, even you young ones, any time you make your parent cry. Because you want to put them through something. Why? Because you just want them to bow down to you. Parents aren't supposed to bow down to their kids. They're supposed to bow down to Allah. You kids are supposed to bow down to your parents, Afwan, to bow down to Allah and obey your parents. That's part of obeying Allah. To make your parents cry a tear, he said. To shed a tear. <clears throat> to weep through your disobedience. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he then said to me, he said, do you wish to separate yourself from the fire? Would you like to enter paradise? He said, ay wallahi, by Allah, I want nothing other than this, to be further than the, uh, from the fire, the furthest from the fire that I can, and to enter Jannah. So he said, are your parents alive? He said, I only have my mother with me. My mother is alive. He said, by Allah, if you speak gently to her, kindly, compassionate, be calm, be patient, even when she gets to old age. And their needs are more. Their impatience is, is more. They are less patient. Speak kindly to her and be good to her. Speak good words to her. Feed her. By Allah, if you speak gently to her and feed her, then you will enter the, par- the garden of paradise as long as you avoid the other major wrong actions. These parents' good treatment to them is a ticket to Jannah. Also, the Abu Jannah, Abu Abu Walidain, Bir al Walidain, the middle and the best doors of Jannah, of entering Jannah from its eight doors or its eight gates, is the ones who are obedient and good to their parents. Do not belittle this matter. Any day you can have that argument with them, say a word of disrespect, get in your car to leave because you're upset, angry, you've got to go to work, school, whatever it may be, and that may be the last time you see them. Let that relationship between you and your parents be number one. After the relationship, of course, with Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi and this deen. And you'll find that the two of them coexist. Because even Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentioned when he said يعني, the, uh, of two things, and give thanks to me and to your parents, these two things cannot be separated. May Allah make us of those who take these recommendations and implement them, and inshallah we will complete the other ones as part of this hadith next week, if Allah allows us to be Allahumma <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>